action. Now the die is cast. Cold kicking ass. I'm black humble. In pursuit of a stolen life and dreams are held hostage. Keep on the touch of mass. I'm aligned with the almighty azimuth. As back alley beats meets the Sabbath Industry, you're a myth, get with Aussie rats, mammoth, system the fourth fist In a hammock, conceive this The smash of the stages since 1990 prestigious So we're all back to give you some I'm Sarek, you're watching Hip Hop TV Again, I'm Sarek, you're watching Hip Hop TV DWC I we snap next, we keep this whole shit in check. I hold this mic in the golden palm as I disarm it from any MC. I have a daughter and a son, my DJ is Murder One. Death Wish the Definitive from Death Wish Cast here with the crew. You're watching Hip Hop TV. What up? This is Dice C, Death Wish Cast, and you're on Hip Hop TV, y'all. What's good, guys? I'm Foxy D, and you're watching Hip Hop TV. I'm with Australian pioneers of the hip hop industry, Death Wish Cast. Now, just a bit of background on these guys, if you don't know, which you should be if you're ever a fan of Australian hip hop, is that these guys were one of the first groups to start off in the Australian hip hop. They started back in 1990, and we're here down at Camp Down in Sydney. How you doing, guys? All good. Now, can I just ask, when you guys did start out, you know, American hip hop had already been established, and did you ever question yourselves going down the hip hop path with the accents and how the Australian community would respond to you guys? How did, how did it all start out at that point? Um, no, you never. Know, I suppose some young grew up with the bad boy, you know, so so when you guys first got together, it was you guys and DJ Vane. So when you first started out in the Australian hip hop community, American hip hop had already been established. So we, did you ever question yourself about going down that path? About how Australians would relate the accent, you know, it's a different accent to Americans. Did you ever question yourself about that? Um, at the beginning, you know, I was a little bit of a Matters a hatter on the vinyl and a German bid $430 on it. So I was in the cast of a death wish, locked in the horns. You shoot a train in resistance. Who the hell? Yeah, but just got backlash. Responds with the mic lord rash. Straight arrow, spanking, graffiti funk that I explain. The almighty glides like a manta ray in promotion. My pen is spanned a career longer than Caesar. Romero. So we're all back to give you some. Because that hit went on Norway's Rainbow FM. So, yeah, that would have been amazing for you. Yeah, we, we heard about that. You know, and, just, and it was a time when there wasn't much, uh, you know, like internet coverage or, you know, most of the new cuts were the music and the film magazines and the new projects. In around 1995, you guys broke up, and but you seem to be doing so well, you know, with your AUST single, you got a video for it, the hit internationally. Were there any problems in the group, or? We had this massive punch up. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I think we just had different ideas, and um, at that time, you know, we were getting more ambitious with everything going on, and uh, everyone, you know, started, brains started going different ways, and, you know, and, that, and we, we're all good friends, so we, you know, let everyone do what everyone wants to do, you know what I mean? And I think we always knew in the back of our head that we'd end up working together again through the whole time, you know, and we ended up getting back together a few years later, so. Well, good to hear, because you had that break, and that's in the past, and you're back stronger than ever. But not with DJ Vame anymore, it's DJ Murder One. Yeah. And can I just say, this guy is amazing on the decks. 
He was ripping it up. The first time I saw you was at Bondi Beach Road Hotel and I was like, oh, I couldn't keep my eyes off you. <laughs> and you were ripping it up on the deck, scratching everything. So how did you hook up with the boys? Um, I, was, I was doing some work with uh, Sleeping Monk. Big up to you, brother. Um, met him through like the rest of the so it was just a natural thing because they're all friends and they're really looking forward to this whole process of like, mates and helping each other out, doing it, taking it to the pool. And um, yeah, like Paulie, you know, hit me up with some, um, some gigs to, to, to help him uh, out and build up the brass there and um, it just pretty much snowballed. And it was all on stage too, mate. That was, that was a big deal. Yeah, like they announced it on stage, and I was like, oh. yeah. So good so. work. Well, you're all amazing on stage together, and I have to say, this isn't just for the camera, but you are one of my favourite groups to watch perform. But um, you know, you interact with audiences. You got the b-boy poses. Is is that all staged, or do you kind of just go with the flow? The whole, um, you know, around the time of Beach Street and break dance and all that, it was all about that, you know what I mean? So we grew up like that was natural for us, and it still is today. We can back up our b-boy stances straight up. Your latest album, The Legacy Continues, which is out through Basic Equipment Hydra, Hydra Funk. Tell us a bit about the album, what can we expect and how you've come to title it. Well, basically it speaks for itself, with The Legacy Continues. Um, you're looking at us getting back together on the preparation because it's not just about getting together and making an album. It's about, it's about bringing um, entities together and creating something and all working on it and you're all agreeing and it all coming together. So it may take a couple of years, you know. We're, we're taught not to rush things until we're happy or you're happy and, and it's obviously you know, it's the best thing to do. So it took us about four years to kind of really you know, to kind of get it together, you know, to where we felt comfortable again because you know, they'd gone off and done their thing and I went off and did my thing, you know, but it was destined to happen anyway, but I had to make the magic happen. Kind of rush quality. You can't do it, you know, and we make hip-hop albums, you know, we don't make kind of just rap albums, so in a sense, yeah. And it's about bringing styles together as well, you know, your three styles and then bringing nerds together, you know, and it must happen naturally. Well, you guys have been around for almost 20 years, so tell us, how, are you proud of where we are today compared to where we started out? We could have thought, you know, like when we started, you know, um, Australia, you know, Australia, 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 Australia. You know the, it, it's all progressed to, to the level where, you know, it, it's, the bar's been raised and, you know, people who can, you know, get behind that. That's why we're trying to take this a little bit further ourselves, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, going to Europe and, you know, we're, as we have been for the last 20 years, you know, um, but yeah, hopefully we'll make this a reality this time, you know, um, because yeah, it's the bar's been raised, man, you know.